Come on, said was blind, but now I, I see. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Our speaker tonight, one of the great bishops of our church, residing in the far west, the state of California. No stranger to us, a faithful and loyal servant of the Lord and of his church. He presides over the metropolitan jurisdiction, Southern California. I speak with reference to the Bishop Benjamin Crouch. I ask for him your prayers, your prayerful attention as he shall come to declare the word of the Lord. Everybody receive Bishop Crouch with uplifted hands and say praise the Lord. God bless you tonight. We are grateful for this privilege to our Honorable Bishop Patterson and the General Board, to Mother McLaughlin and the staff of women, and to the Board of Bishops and all of the laity of the House of God. We're grateful to the Lord to be here. The hour was late, you know, for me. I'm pulling uh, a little overtime here, but I'm happy to be serving in the Lord. You often see me around here lifting offerings, and I know you think I'm a deacon, but that's all right. I've served in the state convocations for many years, and I came in as one that was willing to do anything to help to put the program over. I work when you didn't get a dime, didn't look for nothing, just serve. I've always been one that hated to see things done you know, any kind of way. So I volunteered to become a servant. And I'm grateful for every step that I've made in the city of Memphis. My coming to Memphis has been such a great joy, a great happiness. I, I've come here many, many years past when Bishop Mason was alive. I conducted summer revivals here for about a period of 15 years, coming in the months of July, June and July. I brought my children, Andre Crouch, Sandra Crouch, Benjamin Crouch, when they were very small. In those days, they didn't have a name like Andre and the disciples. We were wondering what they were going to be because we didn't know what they were going to be. So we gave them a name, the Three Wonder Kids. And my lovely wife, and I'll have her to stand and come stand on my side for a minute, Sister Catherine Dothera Crouch, Amen. This young lady I met some 52 years ago. We've been married 49 years. And I'd like for her to have an expression at this time, Sister Crouch. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be in this convocation. I thank God that when I was 17 years old, the Lord baptized and filled me with the Holy Spirit. And I'm so glad that I know him as Lord. I know him as my Savior. I know him as one that can do all things. In 1987, the doctors let me know that I had cancer. I had a mastectomy. But the Lord is a healer. And I thank God for it. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God because he's my strength and when you know the Lord, you can trust him for whatever happens within your life. And I praise God for the walk that we have with the Lord and walking 
with my husband. Bishop Brooks and Bishop Port was with us in our convocation this year and that was a documentary that Bishop Brooks had a chance to see and this documentary is has been the, left in the Library of Congress for the things in which we were doing, are doing, and been doing for over 45 years. We have a consistency of prison work, juvenile hall, and street ministries with a huge truck, with a lift on the back, and from time to time I go out with my group and my church and preach from this truck. I'm a preaching bishop that preach on the street. I started out on the street corner some 49 years ago and that street service has never left out my blood. And every now and then I gotta get out on the street and I want to let you know the Lord has blessed. I have some of these workers here and I think Bishop Brooks wanted me to have some of these workers to come and express themselves. Now here, Sister Basley, will you come? And Sister uh, Purnum, will you come? This lady coming here now is a retired deputy county sheriff in Los Angeles. But she's saved and filled with the Spirit of God. Before coming here this time, she wanted to know whether I wanted an extra helper. If you don't know what an extra helper is, I can tell you what it is with the 45. And I said, no, I don't need that helper to, to come along with it. But she's here. We go into the homes, low rent housing, where the drug addicts do all of their business. And this is the, this is the woman that goes in. If you had a chance, for those of you that are here, to see that documentary on your channels, I don't know whether you saw it in this, this, these parts, but all throughout Southern California, Arizona, Texas, and around, this documentary was shown. And uh, here is a lady that was one of those that were witnessing uh, working in the low-rent housing. She has words to say. Thank you, Pastor. Giving honor to all whom honor is due. I'll be very brief. We thank the Lord for what He has done. He has allowed us to go into a place where it was formerly called Sherm Alley. And there, there is drugs, prostitution, many things. Child abuse, you name it, and it's there. But the Lord said, go, and we went. We started a Bible study. And there the children come. You never really know who will come what week. But as they come, we minister the word of God. We're there, we're available for the children, the teenagers, the adults, whoever wants to come. We don't preach a religion. We don't preach a church, we just preach the word of God. We try to live before these children because living in the neighborhood, they're able to see you in other than a church setting, which is important. But we thank God because he has moved. We see and we have learned by talking to the children that an impact has been made. Pray for us as we carry the word of God there. There are people who are coming. The drug addicts are asking for prayer. We even have a prayer box, a request box, where the people can leave their prayer requests and they're leaving them. Thank you. That sure here is Mrs. Purdom, or Sister Purdom, who works into the home street corners along with her husband. And her husband is coming. I want him to come at this time. But at this time, I want her to express herself just what's going on. I praise God for the opportunity to come before you tonight. I thank God for the vision that he has given to my pastor. I'm one of those that, too, go into the streets. On Saturdays, we have a street ministry, and I share with my husband. But I'd like to say to you briefly that a year ago in October, I was at my brother's funeral. And I thought of the times that I had had the opportunity to share Jesus with him and I had not taken advantage of it. And as I looked at him, not knowing that I would see him 
in eternity, I realized that, slaying up, that saying up there that says, I won't be silent anymore. And from that day on, I haven't been silent. I've taken advantage of every opportunity to share Jesus with the people in the street. Because if we go out there and love them, they can see Jesus in us. And I realize that sometimes we're the only Jesus that these people will ever see. For five or six years, this handsome, tall gentleman here goes into juvenile halls every Sunday morning that God sends. We have five Sunday school teachers that go in the Silmar Juvenile Hall giving the word of God. And you have to be special people to get in to do this type of work. And I want you to hear him. Praise God. Jim Perkins. I thank you and I thank my bishop for allowing me to speak. And I praise the Lord that I'm a member of the Church and God in Christ. I've only been a member for four years now, but I praise God that our bishop allows us to work in the church. And I am a chaplain and a Sunday school teacher for Silmar Juvenile Hall. That's for the county of Los Angeles. And we go in and we preach the word and give Sunday school classes to these children plus private counseling. And many of these children are in these institutions and their parents don't see them, some of them, no family at all, but they do get to hear the word of God. And I can say for a surety that in this institution and in many institutions all over the country that there are many children, young people, that are being saved. It's an excellent ministry. Young people need to hear the word of God. I thank God that he has given me this gift to go in. Pray for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for these workers. I would like to encourage all workers, if it ever was a time that we need to stand forth and present the gospel, it is now. As I said earlier in my life, coming to the city of Memphis in revivals and being blessed of God to have been able to stay in the home of our founder, Bishop Mason. When we would come in, Sister Mason and Bishop Mason would be immediately ready to leave town. And I had the chance to sleep in Bishop Mason's bed whether you know it or not, when I got in his bed after he left town, I went all over his bed squirming, rubbing, trying to get some of that that he left behind in that bed on my body that I could be able to stand here tonight and tell you about the Lord Jesus. I can never forget those days. I remember coming to this city when the weather was 107 and 112. I stood on the corner of Georgia and Lauderdale there, and I had a group of people on the street corner with me out of the church, and I prayed to God. We were on a three-day fast. Had not rained in about seven or eight weeks. And I asked those people, how many of you believe that God can send the rain? Some of them may be here now, I don't know. But I began to pray, and they lifted their hands and said, we believe. And it had not rained, and it had not predicted any rain. But we prayed that afternoon, on a Sunday afternoon, and immediately after the prayer, a whirlwind came up. I shall never forget it. And uh, we rejoiced because of the whirlwind. For we believe that God says, hey man, I'm going to send you a rain. And that Sunday night, a cloud burst came. The rain came down from heaven. And God sent a rain. And the saints rejoiced to the highest. For God had answered our prayers. The God we are serving is a living God. Now it doesn't take me long to get started off. Amen. So you don't have to sit here a long time with me. I'm Brother Ben. And uh, I just thank God for this privilege. But I have another testimony. You know, the Lord has blessed my wife and I 
We went to a little city in Los Angeles called Pacoima. That's a strange name, but it's in the city of Los Angeles in the northern part. In this city, when we went, there was about 75 homes, no more. But God directed me to this city with the permission of my Bishop S.M. Crouch at that time. I went to a spot of ground, no paved streets, jackrabbits, rocks, grease weeds, rocks weighing four and five hundred pounds. But I stood on those grounds that the Lord gave us. And the Lord said, I'll build a church here. I'll build a church on those grounds which stands today. And that church began a great start in our lives. And we outgrew this church. I didn't want to tear this church down. I wanted to leave it for a record of history. And after outgrowing this church, God told me that the city where rocks were would turn to people. Today it's densely populated, over 150,000 people or more. God has sent the people. After we outgrew the church, the Lord says, build another church. I build, I started, proceeded to build another church with the plans. God said, at least I, I told the Lord, I said, now, Lord, if you want me to build this church, I don't have the money. But the Lord said, build anyway. No money. But he said, build. And I had the plans drew up. The plans cost me about $10,000. How I paid for them, I don't know. But they were paid for. After getting the plans, I was afraid to break the ground. Because what I had design on paper was far more than what I had. But the inspector came by one day and said, Reverend, when are you going to start building? I said, Inspector, I don't know. I don't have the money, don't know where it's coming from. But he said, I tell you what you do, if you don't start building, you're going to have to buy another permit. So well, he said, if you will get started, I said, well, I'll tell you what I do. I'll start. And I took a shovel. He said, just get a shovel and dig out one scoop of dirt. And I'll tell them down to City Hall the building is started. And the truth of it all, when I dug that one shovel of dirt, I never stopped. The building cost over a million dollars with everything in it sound system and everything, never had to borrow a dime, never had to go to a mortgage holder. God is a wonder. The God I serve is a wonder. Amen. Not only has he done that, but everything that stands on those grounds, I put it together. I told the Lord, I didn't want to buy anything that somebody else built. I want to build it myself. And God has allowed that to happen. And then just two and a half years ago, a hundred miles from this place, I had another experience to build another church with 12 people. And I just completed that church a little over two years ago. $350,000 church. Don't owe anybody anything, never been a mortgage holder all that. Don't ask me how I do it, but God is just a wonder. God can make a wave out of no way. He's just God all by himself. All he wants you to do is just trust him and put your trust in him and God will bring you out. Thank you, Jesus. And every church I build, you know, I have a heart situation. I have a heart attack. The first church I had a heart attack. Put in five bypasses. Everybody thought I was going to leave here. You know when you're just about on your last roundup, the hungry hounds come around. You don't know what a hungry hound is. Ask somebody next to you. They knew the church was paid for. 
thank you, Jesus. And when I was in the hospital, five bypasses, didn't know whether I was going to make it or not. But I said, Lord, you know my desire. Thank you, Jesus. Somehow or another, he allowed me to get up. Hallelujah. And then 10 or 12 years later, building this second church, a hundred miles away, I had another experience, another heart surgery that took my heart out, laid it on the table, put an artificial respiratory system in, then put in six bypasses. I've had 11 bypasses all together, but I want to say God is still God. He's still a way maker, whether you know it or not. The God I serve makes a way out of no way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't mind telling what the Lord can do. For the Lord can make a way out of no way. If you just trust him. My message tonight is a little late for me, but if you sit there a while, thank you, Jesus. In the book of Corinthians, Dr. Jones is here, you know, and I know he's a philosopher. But Brother Jones, I'm one of those country preachers. I'm one of those preachers that believe that God can do anything but fail. Thank you, Jesus. And in the book of Corinthians, the second Corinthians, four, five, and six, Paul was telling Timothy, telling the Corinthians rather, said, for we preach Christ not ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servant for Jesus sake hallelujah for God who has commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My subject is I'm bound to do his will. I'm bound to do his will. No matter what the cost may be. Paul told Timothy, Hallelujah, to study to show you seven proof a weapon that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. I've never been a lazy man in my life. I don't like lazy folks. Thank you, Jesus. If I was a woman, I would never marry a lazy man. I don't care how he look. Don't care how his hair is. Don't care how he can speak. But if that rascal is lazy, I don't want him. Thank you, Jesus. But God wants workers today. He wants workers in his vineyard. If ever was a time to say within your heart, I'm bound. I'm bound to do the will of God. Thank you, Jesus. Paul gives a reason. He had said that the preaching of the gospel. Hallelujah. He let them know what the gospel meant to him. Thank you, Jesus. The gospel came through suffering. The gospel came from our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave his all on Calvary that we might have a right to the tree of life. Thank you, Jesus. We take no thought of ourselves. We lose sight of the things of the world and turn our hearts to do the will of God. And I'm bound, hallelujah, to stand up for God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I don't like too much about what I see today in the church. This church was not wrong or what we are doing today. Thank you, Jesus. I remember the days of E.M. Page. I remember the days, praise God, of uh, uh, W.J. William Day Taylor. I remember the days, praise God, of old man in Chicago. Hallelujah. I remember the days of Bishop Jones, O.T. Jones Sr., how these men stood against the wiles of the devil and preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they didn't know what it meant to be elected 
on the trustee board. They didn't know what it meant to be on the general board. They didn't have no election team trying to put them in office. I believe if a man stand up for God, that God will make a way for him, that God will put him in power. I believe that God is still on the throne. I don't believe that God is pleased with the thing that we are seeing today. Hallelujah. If it ever was a time that we need to be stirred, it's right now. We need a stirring as we've never had before. Stir me, Lord. Stir me, Lord. Hallelujah. I will let you know there's something about God that God has never let me down. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I remember I've never been broke since I've been saved. I've never been broke. Hallelujah. Since the Lord came into my life, everything I wanted from the Lord, the Lord had given me my heart's desire. I remember when I didn't have a piano player, I didn't know where he was coming from. I walked over to Andre Krause. I laid my hand on his head. I said, do you believe? Would you play if God anoints you? He says, yes, daddy. I laid my hand on his head. And I said, music, music, come into his life. Music, come into his hands. And two weeks time, he was playing in the house of God. I'm talking about a God that I serve. The God that I serve. He's a way making God. He's a prayer as a God. He's a door after God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But there is a flaw. There is a weakness. Something is happening. We cease to pray. We don't pray no more. Thank you, Jesus. Our hearts are hearty. Our bank accounts are high. But God, God is going to bring us down. God is going to level us off. Thank you, Jesus. If we'll call on the Lord, if we'll come back to the old landmark and come back and say, Lord, set me up right. Start me out right. And I believe, I believe that God will make a way out of no way. Say yes. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Some of us, we got tricks. You never see me see many tricky preachers acting like the Jim Jones. Thank you, Jesus. The greasy palm, witchcraft and superstition. I've got the sick of revivals. Evangelists that call themselves coming to your house. Say, I want to holler for you. Have nothing to give. Say, what do you I want to holler for you. I don't need no hollerers. I need some prayer warriors. I need some crying out. I need somebody to call on the Lord. The Lord has called us back on our knees. Yes, Lord. When David, oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. When David lusts after the little woman Bathsheba, when she walked, when he got up on his roof and looked out through the window, he saw this beautiful, attractive woman. And this woman attracted him. And he lusted after this woman and sent for this woman and got the woman to come. He laid with the woman. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you know the story. He laid with her. She became a child. And she told David, I'm pregnant. I don't know what to do. And Uriah, her husband, was on the battlefield. He called her husband in, sent for him to come back home. Hallelujah. He knew what he had done. Said, oh, son, you need to go home and see your wife. But I hear Uriah said, I can't go. I can't go home. Men are dying on the battlefield. Men are losing their blood. I can't go home. He's trying to make him go home. But when he refused, hallelujah, he had the captain of the army. He wrote a message and said, listen, said this young man, David, young man, he rise. I want you to put him in the front line. I want you to get rid of him. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. 
We got too many Uriahs, hallelujah, that are suffering. We got too many Davids uh, that are whoremonging in the church. Uh, we've lost our anointing, but God, uh, hallelujah, is calling our number. And God is going to bring us down. I said, Lord, search my heart. Search my ways. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you can give me a little chance. Are oh, you praying for me? Thank you, Jesus. And I can see, oh, Brother Nathan, a little praying prophet, when he came to David, said, oh, Brother David, you know there's a man that has some your little, little, little you lambs. Thank you, Jesus. And this man was a big man. He had so much. He had the abundance. He was wealthy man. He had the riches. He had the cattle. He had the lambs. He had everything. Hallelujah. And there was a little bitty man that had nothing but one new lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Just one new lamb. And this man that's so rich, you know, when you're covetous, a man that's covetous, he's wicked. When he seeks to take something that doesn't belong to him, thank you, Jesus. And a lot of us are wicked. A lot of us are taking that don't belong to us, taking things away that belong to someone else, and trying to act like everything is all right. You can't act holy. You got to be holy. The Lord said, "Be holy and upright." Hallelujah. And David began to tell, "Are oh, you a praise God? Hallelujah! Oh, you're not praying for me." But Nathan began to tell David all about the little poor fellow, and you know, he told the rich man took it, what he had. Thank you, Jesus. But he said, "Listen, I want to tell you something." He said this man ought to be put to death. This man ought not live. This man ought to die. This man is not worthy to walk. And he said, listen, said he took his finger out of his pocket. I guess he rubbed it off and said, die on the man. You the man. You the man. Hallelujah. And I heard David cry to God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Blood all of my transgression. Forgive me of all of my sins. I need your help right now. If you cry out to God, church, we need to cry. We need to cry. Cry to the Lord. Lord, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. And the Lord will. He'll deliver your soul. He'll bring you out. He'll straighten you up. He'll give you your heart's desire. If you cry out to God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We got so much now. So much. A precious woman came to me the other day about a daughter. Yes. Wanted to be married. I said, the man needs such him. Such the man. Set him out. You don't want no homosexual. I don't want no homosexual. Marry my daughter. I don't want no punk. I don't want no freak. I don't want none of this stuff. I don't want no lesbian. I wouldn't marry a lesbian. I wouldn't marry a punk. I wouldn't be, I, I don't want AIDS. I don't never want AIDS. I don't care what you say about it, but I don't want it. Thank you, Jesus. I remember this church when the saints marched and stood for righteousness. I remember the church of God in Christ stood for holiness. Holiness all the way. Holiness in the morning. Holiness in the night. Holiness in the noonday. Holiness everywhere. Everywhere I went was holiness. Thank you, Jesus. But now everything, everything is in the so-called church. But God, God is going to get him a church. God is going to get him a church out of a militant body. God is going to save somebody. Say yes. Yes. We are dying with a disease. And sin is the cause of it all. Oh, glory to God. Just give me a little more chance. I'll be through in a minute. But something down here. I'm rushing. I'm bound. I'm 
down. Can I hear you say I'm down? I'm down. I'm down to preach the gospel. I'm bound to do the will of God. I'm bound to set up for Christ. Drug addicts are killing our young folks. A few weeks ago, I buried a, 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 one of the drug leaders in the church. A young man, 19 years old, one of the saints' sons. Thank you, Jesus. Anytime you want to go to bed, with a woman, you can go to bed tonight with one. Right now, God is sick of this. This is the Holy Ghost Convention. Yes, it is. Why oh, you may not believe what I'm saying? I don't care if I don't never get up no more. If I never preach again, it'll be all right with me. If I never have the chance to hold a microphone again, I'm standing from my heart. God, God, God drawn us for a purpose. God has filled us for a purpose. He didn't fill you for nothing. He filled you with his spirit. He wants you to use what he has given you for the souls of men. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost empowers your life. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost just don't make you shout. The Holy Ghost empowers your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That you can go. That you can be anointed to do the work of God. Thank you, Jesus. That's the reason why I go to prison. I go because I have the anointing. I'm God's representative. I'm God's soldier. Hallelujah. I'm not a fanatic, but I'm God's soldier. I'm God's representative all right. I'm standing in his stead. I'm trying to do his will. This crowd moves me. You move me. Jesus was moved by the crowd. He was moved by souls. He saw the heaviness of the heart. He saw the condition that they were in. Thank you, Jesus. He wanted to deliver their souls. He was concerned about the even the stinky fisherman. He was concerned about the homemonger, the woman that had glory to God, been caught in adultery. He was concerned about her. When he told the men that you would not sin, throw the first stone. They couldn't throw it because sin was in their lives. And then when they walked away, he asked the woman, where are your accusers? She said, I don't have none, Lord. Said, neither do I condemn you. But one thing I want you to do is go in peace. Go in peace, but sin no more. God won't sin out of our lives. Yes! Hallelujah. When we prostitute, we are prostituting the ministry. When we are among, we are home among in the ministry of God. When we get AIDS, we are getting AIDS against the ministry of God. Thank you, Jesus. God is calling us today. Somebody. I've never seen you don't you don't know. I, we have a group. Then I'm gonna sit down. There is a place in the area of my city where we go carrying the gospel. Did you not know? They won't let no other preacher come in that spot but our group. They said this is crouches, you know, these gays got areas, you know. And they call that area my area. This is crouch area. I got an area on the street that they don't want nobody to preach but us. Hallelujah. And I challenge the gang to come to church. I'm not afraid of them. I stepped out of my garage door. I stepped in my car rather. One day at 2.30 in the afternoon and a man stood over me with a knife about eight inches long. Stood over my head in my car and had his, his arm up said give me your money I looked at him real hard he had a knife I looked at him real hard and I talked to the Lord within my spirit I kicked him in his groin I kicked him so many times I kicked him in the name of the Lord yes I did I kicked him I kicked him all in here 
Hallelujah. I, he got some of my money out of my hand. But brother, I kicked his watch off his arms. He started running. Praise God. And I closed my garage door down and got in my old car. He didn't know me. And I went in. when I said, there he is, he started running. He ran in the backyard of a man that had some Doberman pictures. And he ran so fast, he ran over the fence without even holding the fence. I don't know why he got over it. But the dogs couldn't catch him. He had enough of me. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to let you know that God will give you undue strength, unknown strength. God will strengthen your life. God will make a way. If you're willing to stand up for God, God will make a way for you. I'm tired of seeing weak preachers. I'm sick of folks don't know where they're going. I want somebody to know where they're going. I want a leader that knows where to lead me. I don't want anybody that don't know where they're going. Hallelujah. The church is in trouble. The church has been indicted. The enemy is trying to stop the church. And the only way we, we got enough folks in here right now to, to bind every devil in Memphis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm not going to try to give you a sweet message. I preach this way all the time. And I've had 11 bypasses. Anybody look at me preaching like this and say, you crazy. I feel, I feel better. I, I walk and don't feel good. But when I'm preaching, I feel like an angel. There's something about God that give me strength. There's something about God, he lifts me up. Thank you, Jesus. That's one of my preachers. He'll tell you right now, I preach this way at home all the time. Hallelujah. I believe that God wants us to stand up and be counted. Stand up and preach the word. Stand on the grounds of righteousness. And don't fall, don't fall back. You know you got preachers now. They're dumb dogs. That you are a dumb dog. And you can't bark. Don't forgot how to bark. You see, the Lord will take your anointing away from you. If you play around, he'll take your anointing. You'll just come here and just hug and kiss the sisters. Hallelujah. That don't make you great. Thank you, Jesus. But what makes you a man when you can stand up? Stand up. Hold on. Speak the truth. Stand up. You don't have to come and act like you're a big shot. Many of us. Wanted to be bishop, they ain't got 15 people in our church. A bishop with no people in his church. What is he a bishop over? Nothing. They're walking around with a cross around the neck. They ought to be hung by the cross. Hallelujah. Oh, you don't hear me. Hallelujah, you don't hear what I'm saying. But I believe that a leader ought to be able to lead. A leader ought to be able to lead somebody. If he came to death, but lead a cat or dog, lead something. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us can't lead our dog. Our dog is scared of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God I serve, I'm not bound by the will of man, but I'm bound by the gospel. I'm bound by the power of God. I'm coming in now. I'm ready to quit. But I'm bound to preach the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. I'm bound to do his will. I'm bound to tell the story. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, Christ, how old are you? You wouldn't believe me. I'm 73 years old. And I'm a good-looking 73-year-old man. And I know that. I know that. When the Lord rolled, when I rolled into the hospital, when they gave me that last injection, before surgery. I just told the Lord, I said, Lord, if I don't come back, you just know I fought a good fight. I built your house. I've done everything you told me to do. I didn't hold nothing back. I built a church in Banning, California. Some of them may, may be here. I paid for it by the month. I had a contractor. I paid for it by the month. One month, a bill was $40,000. I paid it for it like for 15 cents. Another month, $15,000 paid for it like for 15 cents. Another month, it was $71,000, I'll never forget, paid for it like for 15 cents. Said, Crouch, where'd you get that money? I said, I don't know. Andre didn't give it to me. No, sir, Andre didn't give me a dime of it. Praise God, paid for it, 
and never ran out. Never ran out of money. I don't know where I came from it, and I never got no money from my church. God is God. That's why they call him God. Because there's nothing living. When Moses was sent to Egypt, Moses wanted to know who shall I tell him sent. He just said, Tell him that I am that I am. Whatever you see, God. If you God, 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 it's God that has, have you said him. You don't have no gasoline pump running in your whatever you run. You you just stand in there. God. He's just God. He's a way making God. I'd like to pray with you tonight. If you just bow your heads where you are, somebody tonight might have needed the simple simplicity of the gospel. I can speak better than this, but I'm just half scared because I'm up here with all so many of you. But my heart is concerned. My heart is burdened. I had a young man, the mother downstairs in Mason Temple right now cooking fish just two weeks ago her son was on drugs and a lot of your sons are on drugs but you won't tell it this young man was on drugs he was going to a drug counseling outfit he came home two weeks ago told his mother I'm tired of going there he said I'm going to kill myself she said boy stop your foolishness you know you're not going to kill yourself 9 o'clock at night had his girlfriend with him, stepped out of the back door, went into the garage, put a rope around his neck, put that, that rope on those rafters, choked himself. The girlfriend went out to see about him. She said, Mother, say Reggie's out there hanging on a rope. Say he's playing. She went out there and said, Boy, come off of that. Come off of that. Come down from there with your pushing. And hit him on the arm. And he spun around like a bag of rags. He was already dead. Gone. Hanged himself. I went to that mother. I did all I could do. I stayed around with her three days. I wanted to show myself because I knew them when they were little here in the city of Memphis in my revivals. Mother Adams down there now cooking fish is her daughter. Many of you might know her. Praise God. But that young man was gone. Twenty seven years old gone drugs caught him drugs are killing and the only hope for us it is true we men of god men of god we got a job to do we cannot pass the drug addict by that's the reason why i have these workers on the street that's the reason why i have them to go to juvenile hall that's the reason why i have them to go to jailhouse i got a young lady up there in that choir that goes to prisons every month we go there for over 40 some years in the prison we go there regularly have never missed there's a perpetual door open in the county and city jails for bishop benjamin j cross and i like when they call me bishop i like to represent as a bishop for the church of god in christ i like to represent i love i don't know no other church but the church of god in christ i've never been in any other church i don't know any other I was found on the altar in my young days. In the young days in Dallas, Texas, they used to sit all the kids on the altar. That's where their regular seats were. That's all I knew. And today, that's in my heart and in my life. And there may be those of you with children. I feel that we need to pray more. As there was a time we need to consecrate. But I feel the burden to pray. Some of you mothers out there are concerned. There's another, uh, so many drug situations. I have another mother in my church right now. Her son is a leader, a, a gang leader, dealing in drugs. He got an area. The other day, some men came in his area, and he calls the shots while he's in jail. Six men were killed outright. A young man, no bigger than, he's not even as large as you, but calls the shots behind bars. Said, kill so-and-so, kill so-and-so. He's in, our, he's in our area and mowed them down. And then the, her young son, in chains, he can't visit, the, nobody can visit him but his attorney. But I want to let you know what a danger, what a situation we're in today. And it's everywhere. It's not only in Los Angeles. And we need to pray. 
the church can fast and pray against this enemy called drugs that's killing our young people. Our young people will never be able to see a college until they learn how to stand against these things that I know that the power of prayer can do if we'll pray, but we won't pray. We won't pray. We won't fast. We won't cry out. Hallelujah. Every morning at five o'clock, Christ Memorial Church, I can't do what I used to do. I'm 73 years old, I can't do what I used to do. I can't do all this that I have to do, but I got workers here that's there every morning praying in the Holy Ghost. And God is working miracles. But I'd like to pray with you. If you just stand up, everybody. My heart is broken. My heart is broken. My soul is stirred. When you see me going around with an offering bucket, I got more sense in lifting offerings. But I just love to know and let Bishop Patterson know and all the general board members know that I'm an honest man. I don't have to steal nothing. I don't have to work for nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't come here to work to get a check. My money's in my pocket when I get here. My church never let me leave broke. I always got money. I bought a Mercedes car, paid spot cash for it. My church don't have me one for nothing. I don't, I don't get nothing dollar down and dollar when they catch me. They just said, take your head out. That's the kind of church I got. But you would never know it by me talking about it. And I'm ashamed to talk about it now. But I just want to let you know what God can do. And I want to let you know that God, you don't have to stoop for nothing. Stand up for God. And I would like to say to every young girl and young man, stand up for God. Whatever you do, stand for God. Let Christ be personified in your life. Let Christ shine out. Hallelujah. And God will ever bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Shanda the Baha, Shanda the Baha, Shanda the Baha, Shanda, oh Shanda, oh God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these Lord that are standing, some with sons, some with daughters, hallelujah, some with husbands, some with wives, that are confined to drugs, they are demonic, oh God, but I know that it's power in the blood of Jesus. I know you can change. I know you can make them alive. I know you can give them new hope. And I know you can do it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch right now. You delivered me, Lord. Glory to God. You healed my body. Leaven bypasses, Lord. You raised me up. I don't know why you did it, Lord, but here I am. And I'm thankful for this privilege tonight. I'm thankful for being able to stand here tonight and to say that I love you. I thank you for these that have given me a chance one more time to tell the story of my love for thee. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we pray. The future of our church. Let not what Bishop Mason and others establish. Bishop Roberts. Oh God. Hallelujah. These great giant of men that suffered agony. Footprints are yet here. But Lord, let not what they have done be wasted. Let it all be gathered up. Let nothing be lost. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now bless these words as simple as they were. In the name of Jesus. And I'll praise you for it. Thank God.
don't you lift your hands and say that everybody all over the building see his glory see his glory see his glory see his glory come down praise his name praise the Lord everybody come on clap your hands and praise the Lord clap your hands and praise the Lord glory to God we're gonna dismiss you everybody is standing the Lord is in this place the Lord is in this place the Lord is in this place thank you Lord Hallelujah.